Hello, Sterling, Colorado, and all you YouTubers out there. This is Michelle Mead once again with the Nostalgic Ceramics Studio, and today we're going to be talking about how we make our in-studio plaster molds. I've been seeing a lot of people making plaster bats for their reclaimed clay on YouTube and Instagram, and I just look at them sometimes and think to myself, geez, you know, there's a really much easier way to do this than what I'm seeing all over the internet. And what is that way, you may ask? The answer to that is coddle boards. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of potters out there don't know what coddle boards are. And that is because uh, they are kind of something of the past. They are something that were utilized heavily uh, in the 70s through the 90s to make slip casting molds. And so they've kind of lost their popularity over the years, however, the coddle boards are a really great tool in studio for plaster bat making and other things around the studio. So even if you're not a slip caster, coddle boards are something to have on hand. And so we're going to go ahead and show you how to use the coddle boards and talk a little bit about how we make our in studio plaster molds. So without further ado, let's make some plaster bats. Let's take a quick look at some of the tools that we're going to need to make some plaster bats here. First of all, we use number one pottery plaster in the studio, not plaster of Paris. And the reason being is that this is stronger. It's more water absorbent. It's gonna last longer in the studio. It doesn't crumble as quickly. It doesn't break us apart as quickly. This plaster was specifically designed to make pottery, plaster, bats, molds, um, you name it in the pottery studio. It's designed for that, that's what we're using. Um, that's the best plaster to use. The other thing you're gonna need is some um, replacement window panes, glass window panes. You can pick those up at your local hardware store. I've got two of them here because we're gonna be doing two plaster bats today. You're gonna need a bucket in the studio that is labeled number one pottery plaster. Nothing but pottery plaster goes in this bucket. Um, plaster in the studio is a great tool. However, it's also a great nemesis because it will blow up in the kiln. And um, if you don't believe me, you can try that out for yourself because you know, I did and guess what happened? Stuff blew up, okay? It does, it blows up in the kiln. It's not like air bubbles or people are like, oh, it's an air bubble, it's gonna blow up and then it really doesn't. This really will, it'll blow up in the kiln, okay? so. You have to have a separate bucket that's just for plaster. Nothing else goes in this. Um, and if you can keep it away from all of your other stuff while not in use, that's ideal. So I've got a little bit of pottery plaster left in here. You're gonna need another bucket. It doesn't matter what bucket. It can be a reclaimed bucket. It can be a used bucket. It can be whatever bucket, a clean bucket. Uh, this is as clean as this bucket gets these days. <laughs> but. Um, any bucket will do. Uh, this is just to measure out our water. You're gonna need some tin snips or pliers or something to cut hardware mesh. A spun is, sponge is useful. Um, a cheese grater um, or, you know, one of those pottery trimming, I don't know what they're called. I use cheese graters. Um, is really good to have to like take off edges uh, sharp edges on your plaster bats. So that's a nice handy tool to have. We're going to need, let me walk around this way. We're gonna need some Dawn dish soap that prevents uh, the plaster from sticking to our molds and our glass and so on and so forth. I've got myself here some really extra stinky reclaimed clay that I'm not too concerned about throwing away when we're done because like I said, if you get plaster in this, it can't go in the kiln. So we're not reclaiming any of this clay. It is going directly in the trash once we're done with it. We need clamps for our coddle boards. We're gonna be using coddle boards to make our molds. If you don't have these in the studio, get yourself some. They're real simple. It's just a piece of wood with another piece of wood screwed on, uh, four of them so that you can make a mold. If you don't have one of these in the studio for your bats, well, make yourself some, they're useful. We've got ourselves some N95 dust masks so that we don't get anything in our lungs. And we have ourselves some hardware mesh. 
So the plaster that we're going to be using today or the proportion of plaster we're going to be using today is three parts plaster to two parts water. That's the ratio. That's the absorption great. That, that's the great absorption you want. It's a solid hard mold. Um, three parts plaster, two parts water. That's what you want. All right, so that's it for the tools. I'm gonna come back on here once we start um, putting things together and, and making these bats. Okay, we're gonna put our paddle boards together on our piece of glass here. And I've got Lynn here helping me say hi, Lynn. Hi. <laughs> say it louder, Lynn. Hello. <laughs> okay, so we've got four paddle boards. And again, this is just a board that we've we've uh, screwed just another piece of wood too. It has like maybe, I wanna say these boards probably got six coats of oil-based polyurethane on them, just so that they don't stick to the plaster. And we're gonna start putting these together. We're setting them on top of the glass so that we have a little lip to pull the glass off of the plaster bat afterwards. And so you need at least four coddle boards for per mold. So if you need two, if you're doing two molds, you need eight. And I'm just going to show you how these go together real quick. Okay. And we're just lining them up in a way that we can get the clamps on each side of these. And I'm lining them up with the edge of the glass also so that my molds are roughly the same size as the glass and they're kind of equal in size. I don't know why that's important to me, but it is. <laughs> it makes no difference really. And then once we've got these together, I'll kind of move the camera so you can see. Probably get bigger clamps than what I got to do this, but the bigger clamps are more expensive. And so I just went with these. And so we're just kind of forcing them on. So the boards just have that piece screwed on to them and this is how we're clamping them together. Looks like this on the inside. glass at the bottom. The glass does not need soaked because um, it will release from the plaster pretty easily. And so we've got two ready to go. Lynn is cutting the hardware mesh for us. Okay, so now we're rolling slabs, or rolling slabs, we're rolling coils and we're putting it and sealing all of the gaps. So That's just gonna prevent any plaster from leaking out of our molds. So we've sealed all of the gaps on our mold with clay on the inside and the outside because we don't want any plaster spills because that's a mess. Okay, so now we're using Dawn dish soap on a sponge and we're just wiping everything that the plaster is going to touch except for the glass. The glass will release easy but the coddle board and the clay won't so we're just getting Dawn dish soap everywhere we need it so that our mold releases. Okay. Piled. Okay, so we're a mountain. That's a mountain. Let's see how much more this is telling us to put in. Okay, so. Oh, there's a lot more. Yeah. So like, I know when we poured the cement countertops, we wanted it like a thick, creamy peanut butter consistency. 
but so, not too runny. Right, and I don't know what this is, but we're going off of a professional potter's slip casting book. Okay. So we're so gonna we're I, gonna see what he says. We're gonna see if what he says is the right ratio, right? That's the experiment. Well, and then if and then if it is good, then I'll post the book. Yeah. Right? When we did it, we were looking for cake batter. Okay, just dump it in now, right? Sure. Just go for yeah, it. What you want me to do? Yeah, sure. there's nothing in there that you can see, is there? Yeah, we're good. Is it coming out? Yep. That's probably good enough. Okay, we'll see. So that was definitely more than a mountain. Did the bag say what they said to suggest? Yes, there's always a suggestion on the bag. And he says that his measurement is pretty close to the bag's suggestion, um, but simplified so that he didn't have to, you know, basically what we did, like making the measurement easy, but uh -huh. close to the bag, right? There. Oh, and then you don't use the mixer on plaster so that you don't air. get, you're running to keep the air bubbles out, I guess. But I mean, that looks like normal plaster mm -hmm. consistency to me. Okay, our mesh. You guys, this is just gonna make one mold. Don't push it all the way down, just, yeah. I'd rather it be like poking on the bottom than on the top, if we can. Yep. It was just moving that way. How thick are we? We're like okay. right here. Yeah, we'll just dump the rest in now. So that made one mold. It does look like it's had a little war. <laughs> or no, did you make it that way? I bent it like that on purpose because I was like, oh, this needs to be bent. And it didn't break and it works great. Here, you want to do it? Sure. Smooth as glass. There you go. There, now you can record that. Smooth as glass. Okay, so here we have the finished plaster bats. They're working great. They're very absorbent. They've been uh, very useful. I feel like the ratio was really great. I picked up this book, and this is the book that gave the ratio for the um, for the plaster we used. Um, it's Mold Making and Slip Casting by Andrew Martin. If you're interested in looking at that book, I suggest you pick that up because it's got a lot of really great information 
on how to make all sorts of slip casting molds. Uh, it doesn't go into too much detail on making plaster bats. However, there's a lot of information in here on plaster itself. So if you're looking to learn more about plaster in general in the pottery studio, you might want to pick this up or rent it from the, or check it out at the library. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or um, comments, please uh, post them down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.